welcome back to another episode of the Byzantine Ukrainian Commentary Podcast. Uh, this is a bit of a double, double, uh, double reading this weekend um, because we are now on the revised Julian calendar. Um, we have the exaltation of the Holy Cross this past week. Um, is it Wednesday? Thursday. Thursday. Um, so this Sunday, in being the 15th Sunday after Pentecost, is also the Sunday after the exaltation of the Holy Cross. So we kind of get a double dose. We get two different two different readings and two different epistles and two different uh, topaz and kundaks this week. So we get a little bit extra, a little bit of uh, bonus stuff. Um, before we start with uh, Mark chapter 8 and Galatians chapter 2, the text will lead us in a molecular. Lord, we thank you for your cross and your example of suffering for the good of others. How often we have to do this also. So when whatever things we do, uh, we never just think of ourselves, but someday, somehow, people will reap the benefits of our sacrifices. Help us to see that and encourage us to live that. Amen. Amen. There's one topad and one kundak this Sunday. Save your people, O Lord, and bless your inheritance. Grant victory to your faithful people against enemies and protect your community by your cross. By your own choice, O Christ our God, you were lifted on the cross. Grant your mercies to your new community that bears your name. By your power, gladden the faithful people and grant them victory against enemies. May they have the help of your instrument of peace, the invincible sign of victory. Our epistle reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, uh, chapter 2, verses 16 through 20. Yet who know that a man is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Christ Jesus, in order to be justified by faith in Christ, and not by works of the law, because by works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if in our endeavor to be justified in Christ, we ourselves were found to be sinners, is Christ then an agent of sin? Certainly not. But if I build up again those things which I tore down, then I prove myself a transgressor. For I through the law died to the law, that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by life, by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. And he called to them, to him, the multitude with his disciples, and said to them, If any man would come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? For what can a man give in return for his life? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. And he said to them, Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God come with power. This gospel, the Sunday after the exaltation, has a good, beautiful verse I like to quote. What If you gain the whole world and forfeit your life, what can you give in exchange? In the Greek, they use the word for cosmos. In other words, the universe of all that is beautiful out there, you as an individual are worth more than all of that. And... It seems so simple a message that out of everything you will ever have, you are the most important thing. It's like the famous joke about the person who was opening the car door 
and a car came by and ripped off their arm. And the only thing they could think of was, oh my God, where's my watch? In other words, you, looking at that horrible example of that little story, was the watch more important than the arm? Of course not. Uh, is your house more important than you or your children, your family, your husband, your wife? Of course not. But practically speaking, sometimes we go out and we, we kiss the inanimate objects of our life and provide them with more attention than we do to our family and to ourselves. We have to check the car. We have to check the furnace, the air conditioner, the money. All this is necessary, and we need to do that but sometimes we can go above and beyond that and these things become a place of refuge where we run away from both ourselves and the people that we should be loving and showering our affection on. The second point for me in this gospel is obviously uh, Jesus gave us the example of how to carry the cross. That it's difficult. There's no way to sugarcoat reality. Life can be very tough. However, if you live a life of sacrifice, in a good sense, you give up one thing so that it might be easier for you to do something else. You go to work so that you may have money to pay the bills and pay for your life. Uh, you don't eat uh, too much sugar so you can remain healthy. You give up time or you spend time wisely. I go to church. I speak to my children, to my husband, to my wife. Um, I take time out to pray. There was a book that once came out, Too Busy Not to Pray, uh, because one of the virtues of American life is, I'm busy, I'm so busy, I'm so important that I have no time to pray, to go to church, or even to talk to my own family, or even finally, even to spend a moment of time thinking about myself, which is so contrary. When you go on an airplane, the very first thing, thing they tell you if there's an emergency Put the oxygen mask on yourself so that you can help your child or anyone else that may help you. Because if you don't take care of yourself, it's impossible to take care of anyone else. So you may hear people say, I'm going to spend time on myself today, which is good. I'm going to focus on my life or I'm taking a day off or an afternoon off to think about myself. Uh, so even though life is hard, we follow the cross of Jesus, and in the long run, it's the best way to live because Jesus is telling us in today's gospel, if you lose your life for his sake, in other words, you give up a lot of stuff that people think is important, you will really find yourself. The gospel never <clears throat> ends up with us losing ourselves. We find ourselves, we find meaning for our life, and the cross becomes the place where evil is faced head on, and you know who wins? Good people. This is a nice, uh, it's, it's a really nice combination that, the church gives us these two um, passages together from Galatians and also from Mark because um, I love the, the little example that you gave of, of losing your arm and, and thinking of the watch because St. Paul points out in Galatians that we're not justified by works of the law and 
this obviously has been big contention within within Christianity since the Reformation because this is this is the main discrepancy between Protestants and Catholics about about salvation. And Paul is pointing something out here, and you made the point about losing the arm and, and only focusing on the watch. A lot of times what, what can happen is we can look at our, uh, our salvation or we can look at what we're doing and we can say, am I doing enough good stuff? Am I keeping a good score? Um, and I think one of the things that St. Paul was pointing out and maybe trying to tell the people at the time who were coming from a Jewish background was you can get lost and bogged down in these ceremonial and technical things of the old covenant, especially when it came down to these ritual and ceremonial laws that the, that the Jewish people observed. That's what Paul is referring to when he says that these works of the law don't save you. It's not about doing these technical things and keeping a good score, and then at the end of the day, when you weigh them out, you'll have done enough of them, and then you'll be admitted to heaven. He's pointing out that that's not what it, that's not what it means. And for some context, we can look in, in his letter to the Romans in chapter 13, verse 8. He says, Oh, no one, no one anything except to love one another, for he who loves his neighbor has fulfilled the law. And we can forget to love our neighbor in that getting bogged down by the technicalities of this, of whatever is going on, but in particular in, in the context of Paul's letter to the Galatians in the law of the Old Covenant. You could get lost in all this technical stuff and you could forget your neighbor. Um, and when Jesus explains what is the most important, what's the most important law, he says, love God and love neighbor. He doesn't say wear certain clothes or, or wash yourself a certain number of times. Those are the most important things is to love God and love your neighbor. And you can get preoccupied in these other kind of ancillary things that were in themselves not bad things. But if they supplant our love for God and for our neighbor, then they become a stumbling block. Um, and so that's something to remember. We can, we can debate that kind of thing. Um, especially when it comes down to you know, Protestant and Catholic debate. But all we have to do is look back to this really great combination where we also read from Mark, and Jesus is saying to follow him means you have to take up your cross. It means that there's something that's involved in doing that. It's not just saying, I'm with you, Jesus. Yes, yes. I want to go over. <laughs> I also want to maybe make a segue to the last verse in chapter 9. Uh, verse uh, 1. Uh, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God come with power. In speaking of sacrifice and carrying the cross, of giving up your life to find it, Christ in today's gospel also wants to underline there's a power to that. When you can't be bribed and in spite of your fear you do the right thing, that's the kingdom of God coming in power. We begin the liturgy by saying, blessed is the kingdom. The kingdom begins now. Eternal life has begun already. We, are, we do this transition called death into this next stage. But from the moment of conception, eternal. although we are mortal, we are eternal. We will live forever in the kingdom. So there is a power to that knowledge and that conviction. So the saints like St. Lawrence would say, as they're burning him, turning me, turn me over, I'm done at this side. There's a very famous story of St. Basil of Caesarea when he was called in front of the Roman procurator and he did not seem afraid at all. And he said, who are you? He says, I'm a Christian bishop. Um, because his life was not ending here. There was a transition called death, but he was thinking of eternity. And that's how Christians have always valued this life in the background of eternity. So what's important for me in this life? That I'm a good human being. And there's a power to that. 
because you can't bribe me, because there is no price, because even the universe is not worth as much as I am in the eyes of God. If you gain the whole world and lose yourself, what can you give in exchange? So this beautiful, positive message of the cross has given Christians the freedom to refuse bribery, to refuse the seduction of power, to live their lives unknown, to have what we used to call the security of obscurity. No one knows me as much as other famous people, but do I really need to be known? Isn't fame just an illusion? So uh, there is a power, and that's why Jesus said, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God coming in power. And every time a Christian makes that courageous stand to refuse to be bribed, to refuse to give in to some evil idea or thought, or to give, not to give in to the seduction of power, he's making that powerful affirmation of the kingdom. I'm a child of God, a child of light, and I am the most important thing. And my brothers and sisters are more important than the entire universe to me. The end of, the end of Matthew's gospel, <clears throat> the last line, uh, Jesus says, I am with you always to the closing of the age. Say that they're seeing the kingdom coming in glory. That's the transformation also of, of the heart. In Galatians, Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. When we, when we take up the cross, when we follow Christ, that changing of our heart, Jesus is still there. The more, the more we cooperate with his grace, the more it changes over from us doing something to Christ being in us and Christ doing those things. I, I heard this lovely quote from uh, from St. Therese this morning on the way here, but I don't remember what it was exactly, but she was essentially saying that she, the more she cooperates with God, the less it is her good works, the more it's Jesus in her performing those good works. And the ultimate goal is that we become like Paul when we can say it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. It's not me doing these things. It's Christ doing these things through me well, because the, I've accepted yeah, him. The unity of love. Anytime you love anyone, there's a unity. Why? Talk to young kids who have good friends. Oh, I want to see my friend, Billy or Mary, G, uh, whoever, whoever it is, whatever the name is. Kids want to be with their friends. Why? Because love wants unity. I want to hang out with my friends. I just It's a new school year for many kids. They're making new friends now. Love demands unity. And the church, there's a reason why we say in the creed, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, one gathering, that there is a power to a visible, concrete presentation on Sunday and holy days and maybe even every day, I take my body and soul and I connect it with these people physically in the same church building and I say, I believe in one God and we make this physical representation of our faith. There is a reason that God wanted us to be physically present with one another because that's part of the profession of faith. I love these people enough to be with them, to spend this hour of prayer with them. So, uh, and why he's, why he's present as well in that time. It's, we're communing in order to give the sacrifice of the Eucharist, which means thanksgiving. That, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in their midst. This is important because our faith is tactile. You can touch it. I was hungry, you gave me to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. I was in prison, you visited me. All these things, religion is concrete and it's very real because it's human beings. That's why sometimes when people say, well, God is everywhere, I pray at home. Fine, 
so do I. But you need to see and to be with real people in their real station in life. And I don't know how many people in the world have been converted by the fact that they saw people going to church. I'm sure it must be a lot. That some, just the simple thing of here's a church building and why are these people going to be together? That's important, to be together, ecclesia, the church, a gathering of faithful. Yeah, what, we, what, we do, what we do matters, and by, by your fruits, you'll be known. Yeah. So we lead by, we're supposed to lead by example um, of doing, doing the things that Christ says we should do. It's not just about saying you know, how pious we are when we are telling people mm-hmm. about ourselves. It's much, much louder to speak by example and show that that's really who we are. We're not just people who say that we believe a certain thing. If we really believed it, we'd be doing it, and then Christ would be living in us. So there you go. <laughs> oh, man. Um, thank you so much for spending this time with us, this little bit of a bonus of this double dose of different readings and different epistles. Um, it's so beautiful we have such a gift um, to receive this and to be able to share it. Um, please do share it. Please mm-hmm. share it with those people that you know, friends and family. Um, it's so easy to just copy the link and whether you're just sending it in a message or sharing it on social media or in a text or in an email, please do that. Um, and please like the video, subscribe to the channel so you can see the other things that we post so that you can um, watch and participate with us in, in Holy Mass and the liturgy if you can't come in, in person. Um, that's live streamed there every Sunday. Um, please leave a comment if you have questions or any concerns, if you'd like something to be addressed regarding our tradition or our new calendar. Um, please do leave a comment. Please know that we're praying for you. Please pray for, pray for us. Maybe I'll be able to speak if you do. And we'll see you all next week.